Right, okay, running through, executing these instructions on the CPU. Okay, remember, the most important thing to remember, this is a model. A CPU does not look like this, okay? But these are the main elements that we need to be aware of in a CPU, okay? They'll ask you in the exam questions what particular roles these parts have. All right, and that's why we need to understand what the hell's going on. Right, we only need to know the value of the program counter when we start. All right, tells us where the instruction is. If we want to load that instruction or read it from memory, we need to put its address in the memory address register. So the first step of executing the instruction is to copy the program counter to the memory address register. Okay, once we've done that, that information is transported along that address bus, then we can issue a read command. So the control unit sends a signal down the control bus and the data is transferred across the data bus. That arrives, and the data in this case is that, at the memory data register. Okay. Remember really, this is a load of notes and ones. But we're writing our machine code instructions in assembly language so that we can follow it okay and make more sense of what the instructions are okay the control unit is done so when it starts this process it assumes what it's got is an instruction but we talked about the fact that if it was data it would still try and execute it okay so it decides to make a copy and sticks it in the current instruction register Okay, so we've done a copy from main store at that location and we've transferred it to the memory data register. That is the only register that is connected to the data bus. Okay, it's the basically the holding point for data that arrives and for data that's leaving the CPU. All right. So third step is to do that copy. Assume you've got an instruction copy it to the current instruction register. At this point, the control unit will attempt to work out what the instruction is. That's what we call decode. So this bit was the fetch. <coughs> then we do the decode. Okay, and it looks that up in a big old list and it says, right, LDA. That means load of value to the accumulator, a register of the arithmetic and logic unit. Okay. It then looks at this part, the data part of the instruction, and it says, ah, the actual number one. So I'm going to transfer the number one to the accumulator. So at this point it goes, I've got everything I need. I will execute this instruction. And obviously, depending on the instruction, the way that the control unit executes that instruction are going to be different. So in this case, it's going to transfer the one to the accumulator. Now. We could just go and start and fetch a new instruction. But if we did it with the state of the CPU as it is, we would execute the same instruction over and over again. So what we have to do is make sure that we go to the next instruction. And we do that using the incrementer. So the incrementer alters the program counter. I'll put a on it. Alters the program counter, so now pointing at the next instruction in memory. So we can put a little short form for that and just say ink P3. Okay, don't worry about how that mechanism works. We don't need to worry or care about that. In the second year, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. But we do that. And then before we attempt to go and get and execute a new instruction, we check to see if anybody wants our attention. Okay, so we do a check for interrupts. <coughs> Right, I'm going to go a bit faster on the next instruction. But that's it. That is the fetch, decode, execute cycle. And then all we do, we start again. And that is all the control unit does. Okay? From the moment you turn it on to the moment you turn it off. That is all it is doing. Pretty boring job. All right? But it's the speed that it can do this that makes the computer do interesting things. Right, so we start the fetch, execute cycle again. We want to get the next instruction. The program counter says where it is. We copy that value to the memory address register. 
We then issue a read instruction. So we read a value and it arrives at the MDR. In this case it's LDA110. We assume it's an instruction, so we copy it to the current instruction register. We then decode it. We look it up, it's a load instruction again. Load a value to the accumulator, but this time, this isn't the value 110, it's the memory address. So the control unit goes, ooh, I want the data from memory address 110. In order to do that, we have to select that memory location. So we take the 110, put it in the memory address register. That selects that location. The control unit then, okay, I'll read that data, and it arrives at the MDR. So that was 150. Notice that the instruction that was in the MDR has now been obliterated, which is why we make a copy. Okay, because we've still got an instruction. Right, hopefully we've fetched the data that we need for this instruction, and we can carry it out. Load. It just overwrites what's already there. It's a bit meaningless, this program. It's a bit like in Python saying A equals 1, A equals 150. Might as well not bother doing that fine. But that's not what I'm looking at. I'm just going through the process of execution. Okay, so we've executed the instruction. Next step, increment the PC. So it points to the next instruction. Check for interrupts. Nobody wants any attention, so we'll just carry on and we'll go again. Okay, so this time, what we'll do? Copy the program counter to the memory address register. Step one. Read the data at that location. Can you see how simple it is? It's not. It's nothing very complicated. So in this time, it's STO104. Make a copy in the current instruction register, and then we'll decode it. And when the control unit looks this one up, it goes, oh, I'll right, oh, know that one, it's store. Store the value in the accumulator at address 104. So, we've got two things we need to do now. First of all, we've got to select that address. So we put the value in the memory address register. Okay. But the value I want to store is here. That is not connected to the data bus. So the control unit also needs to move this value to here. So it copies the accumulator to the memory data register. Now, on specific architectures, you might be able to do transfer straight out. Okay, but on our simplified version, this is what it looks like. So the control unit has been knocking signals about that control bus to make that value go to there, that value go to there. Remember, we don't show all the connections because it would be complicated and horrible and messy. You can find diagrams on the internet that have all the connections wired up. Okay, but you end up with lots of arrows all over the shop. And it doesn't really add um, to what's happening. Okay, so we've done the decode. We've got everything in place, we can now execute this instruction. So this time, if we're going to store a value, we are sending data down the data bus, into RAM. So the 150 travels across the data bus, and it ends up at this location, because that's been selected. So there, it gets overwritten with 150. Okay. Right, so we've done execute, we then do the increment, <coughs> We then check for interrupts. Anyone want any attention? No. Yes, go on. Could an interrupt come from like the main store or somewhere within the CPU itself? Like if you something went wrong? Yeah, no, there's various reasons why you might have interrupts. You might have software wanting to be interrupted. You might have the operating system said, that program's been running long enough, get lost, let's have another program get a go. Which is what's happening when you're multitasking. <coughs> you know when you've got like, you, you're listening to music, you're browsing on the internet, and you're doing your homework, all at the same time, you're actually only running one program at once. And what's happening, very quickly, the operating system keeps interrupting the running program and then goes, ooh, let, let me decide who's gonna have a go next. Then it jumps off itself and leaves the CPU and lets another program have a go. Okay. It's called scheduling, is the process that's going on. Um, but it only really works because computers are fast. Because you, in order to make those decisions, you have to have 
software running to make those decisions and that software has got to get lost to let some other software run. If you ever load up um, task manager and go to the process list and make it show all processes, all those programs are in memory and they're all getting time to run on the CPU. Okay, It's when you haven't got much RAM and you've got really slow hard disk that you will kill your computer if you try and load too many programs up at once. Okay. It's not as big a problem if you've got a beefy machine with a four core processor and eight gig of RAM. All right, you should find that all right. Okay. Right, so I've got to check for interrupts. There weren't any interrupts, so I'm gonna go again and I'm just gonna do the whole cycle again. Copy my program count to my memory address ready to select that address. Do my read. So my data travels across the data bus ends up at the memory data register. I assume, because I'm thick, that it's an instruction. So I copy it to the correct instruction register. Then I decode it. I look at this instruction and it says HALT. Shouldn't that be one of three, not one of four? In your AO. In where? Oh, God, yeah. I don't know why I did that. HALT. Copy it now. <coughs> It's the HALT instruction, and the HALT instruction instructs the control unit to stop fetching instructions. HALT, stop what you're doing. <coughs> but if that's all it did, the CPU would never restart. So what it actually does when it's in HALT mode is it just does that step over and over again, waiting, it just sits there, waiting. And as soon as an interrupt comes in, it can be activated again. Okay, if you put your computer into sleep mode, a similar process will occur. It's waiting for you to press the key. Okay, so some bit of hardware generates an interrupt. So the keyboard goes, oh, someone press me. Wake up the CPU. Can't get it going again. All right, so that is the process, but we only need to know that, that, and that. Okay, for what we're doing. The A2 lot, and I've been, it's really weird this week because I've been doing CPU with both of you, so I've been doing your dumbed down version and then I've been doing their version, where we're talking about actually instructions and what all this bit actually means. Okay, but we'll come across all that in the second year, in detail. Because you'll have to um, be able to write short little programs in assembly language. And be able to understand programs that are in the exam questions. Okay? Right. Let's make a stop.